Well, yeah. Randy Vetter uh, sent me this article this morning, which uh, I think works out really well with what we're talking about you know, in the housing market. And we're talking about the lack of supply, the inflation that we, we don't know if it's going to, well, it will end, but we don't know when and how high it'll get. And then we have this extra, it's, and, and the article is entitled Bubble Talk. So this fellow, Ben uh, Winnick of the Business Insider, had this article, and it was basically three reasons why we're approaching a uh, housing bubble in the U.S. And when, and just so when so everyone here watching, so when you say a housing bubble, what is the occurrence of that? Because well, I know everyone's mind goes to, to 2008. Well, but... that's what they constantly compare it to, and yeah. it'll be in here. So, yeah, reason number one, prices are above the bubble letters or levels. Uh, Case Shiller Index has exceeded the heights of the late 2000s boom. Now, mm -hmm. I did go back and read the article to make sure, because the first thing I thought of was, is this inflation adjusted? Yeah. Because, sure, it's going to be higher than the 2000s, Stuff goes up in price. Yeah. Now, to me, even with inflation adjusted, if we're just now a little bit over top of the original bubble numbers, that's still well within normal appreciation over time. So I kind of discount the prices if it, you're comparing them to 2006. Yeah, I mean, and the reason for them is a much different factor than if you compare them to that 2006. Exactly. And we'll get that to that in a minute, but we know speculation, lack of inventory. Yeah. So houses are selling with bubble intensity. Bubble intensity. Wow. So beyond the price growth, the ferocity of which homes are selling is possibly the wildest on record. So beyond price, the ferocity of which, man. And then you have to ask why and where. Yeah. More importantly, who? Yeah, if we if we break these numbers down, uh, everything and again they're using national averages. Sure. So we know that in places where people and I showed you that migration chart last mm -hmm. week. Yeah. Places where people are moving out of aren't going to have the same intensity of places where people are moving to. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we go back to uh, inventory issues, right? And 100%. we also have to worry about, uh, you know, a fear of missing out thing going, going on because you have really low rates Yeah. and you have, uh, am I going to be able to find a house in the area I want to be in? So that's going to uh, mm -hmm. help that. Right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the third one, rents are spiking higher nationwide. The price to rent ratio rose just above. 1.5 in 2006, and they sat at 1.45 in May of this year. I don't know what the hell that means, frankly. I should have gone back and read the numbers. But um, why would you think rents are going up? Uh, because they're being controlled by large firms that have mass portfolios of rentals. That's one. Yeah. A another reason rents are going up is because it costs more for the houses now. <laughs> well, so if you're paying more for the house, it you costs have more to raise to, the rent. It costs more to buy the house. It costs more to build the house. Um, it costs more to maintain the home. It costs more for sure. your property managers. The pro it well, and costs, you better believe that every municipality reassess those uh, property taxes. That, that's right. Because <laughs> yeah. the values of the homes have gone up. Yeah. All the municipalities, listen, I, I live in Union County. Uh, they voted to raise property taxes there as well. Um, it's almost like that, you know, like municipality forced gentrification. <laughs> like they're re like I, I've seen so many wholesalers with deals and they've got it from people who can't afford their taxes on their homes anymore because the taxes in some cases went up close to a thousand dollars in a year. Um, and people are just selling it because they're like, well, I can't afford to live here anymore. So yeah. that's, no, I that's it. interesting. Now they did go. Uh, uh, this article was presented in a Roofstock uh, newsletter. So mm -hmm. they had their own commentary. And this is what was later discussed in the article is that the credit worthiness of the mortgage borrower and lending standards are significantly different from 2006. Further, the pandemic exacerbated supply chain to create pent up demand for different housing types, meaning most people were moving out of multifamily 
in the single family because they didn't want to be stuck up against somebody else that had the disease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it also allowed them to move further away from their jobs as well. Uh, taking a look at mortgage debt as a percentage of disposable income, we are at all time lows. So people are saving money. They're not going to get into the same financial uh, situation. They yeah, were like, in like we said previously. before, the reason for the pricing increase is completely different than it was in 2006. So I haven't read this article, but I would disagree that there is an imminent bubble coming. Well, I think a lot of times people uh, do these bubble things just so they can get somebody to click on the headline. I mean, I've been reading about housing bubbles since 2016. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, it's, uh, and, and 2016 is nothing like it was or like it is now. And then part of the uh, argument against is that uh, current Redfin data points to a cooling of the housing market as a share of homes for sale um, increasing for the past three months to 4.9%, which is good. There's more houses coming on the market now, mm -hmm. more houses being listed. Um, they're staying on the market a little bit longer, uh, 17 days, which is, I have to laugh. It's, that's a long time to be on the market, 17 half, days. Half a month, man. <laughs> I'm sweating it for those 17 days if your house didn't sell. Um, and then uh, the percentage of houses in May selling for less. Uh, than less price. Or, or, yeah, less of a premium mm -hmm. uh, above the listing price is going starting to go down. But listen, that's going to happen. You're, you're going to have, uh, when you have supply and demand issues, when there's not enough supply, people are going to be willing to pay more. And there goes, there's going to be a frenzy to, uh, to purchase as uh, people start saying, all right, well, this is not really the market for me to buy in. I'm just going to continue to rent. Yeah. Then houses are going to stay on the market a little bit longer. Those folks start to panic a little bit and they start dropping their prices. And mm -hmm. it, you have to let market forces, uh, do their job. That's right. And the, I'm just, I'm just tired of people who are like, housing prices are higher than they were in 2006. We've got to be in a bubble. It's like, well, of course, housing price. That's why we invest in houses because they go up over time. 